triple double training.com. Hey, it's Coach Luke with triple double training.com. And today we're going to talk about high pick and roll basketball strategy. Now, if you're a coach, this session is mainly going to be for you. But if you're a serious basketball player, go to triple double training.com right now, enter your name and email address, and I will send you free player's perspective from the high pick and roll, along with other very valuable basketball videos and insight. Let's get started. Okay, so here's your basic setup with the high pick and roll. You've got your best shooter in the corner. I'm assuming your one guard is right-handed, so he's gonna be on the right-hand side. Somewhere in this lane here, you don't want him in the middle because then your spacing is off. You, some teams even put him over here, really, to get that spacing, to get him to be able to drive the lane. But just for general purposes, this is kind of the setup. Now your five man is gonna sprint screen up on your one man. One man always tests the waters right by because this defender, his defender is gonna be worried about that screen. So if he can beat him right um, quickly, that creates havoc on this defense because he's either got a layup or you've got a three in the corner with your best shooter. So you're gonna test the waters, but then you're gonna come off the screen, shoulder to hip or shoulder to shoulder, somewhere in between there. And then your five man is gonna roll down to the basket. Now, that's everybody knows that. Um, that's just a, a, a general high pick and roll uh, situation. So let's get into it a little more. So now, your one is gonna be there, your five is gonna be rolling down there, and right now your two is here, let's just say your four is here, and your three is here. Okay, now for this example, we're gonna say that the, he was showing low, the defense was showing low. So that's the five man's defense. He didn't come up and hard hedge up here to make the guy go around. He, show, he showed low, and so now your one guard can attack a little bit, or that big man's a little late uh, coming up to help, so now your one can turn the corner. So that's the situation we have right here. So now, in this situation, your one would have the basketball. Five just rolled down. Now, the most important part of this whole situation is getting this two guard to rotate up. This will balance the floor, and it makes his defender right there choose. He can either help on the roll, or he can stay with the two men. If he doesn't help on the roll, you've got a nice little lob right over the top to your five man. Now, with younger kids, junior high, high school, it's very hard to get them to recognize this pass right here, the kickback pass for the shot, or the catch, shot, fake, drive, or the catch, look in the post. All those things you can do off this kickback. But they're so worried and they're so tunnel vision looking in here that they don't recognize this is the open guy. If you watch uh, the EuroLeague, this is all they do. It's just a high pick and roll. This guy comes up, they kick it back, and then they play off that. Or they pin in, but we'll get into that uh, in a little bit. So you have to let your point guard know that he's reading the defense. And that's the pass you want. You want that kickback pass. If you don't feel like anything's open, this kickback pass is almost always open. And if it's not, you've got a layup, basically. So that's an extremely important part of the high pick and roll. This is very key. Hard for a younger point guard to recognize. But if you can get them to recognize that, you're going to have a field day with these closeouts. Because the two man is now helping. Now he has to get back to that man. And now it's either a shot if he has enough space, it's a shot fake drive, or if this five man can post it all, it's a shot fake, throw it into the post, and you've got a post move layup. So now we've got spacing here. Our two man is rotated up. And by the way, you'll see in the NBA that the two man 
won't rotate up as high, so you might have a two-man here, and then he might just slide up here. Obviously, the reason why they don't go all the way up because it's a longer shot up here in the NBA. And the one guard can make that tough pass over the top to the opposite wing, uh, to, excuse me, to the opposite corner for a, a higher percentage shot. So um, if you're not coaching in the NBA, I would highly suggest you rotate your two guard up to about 45 degree angle because that allows the one guard a great passing angle so he can easily get that pass to the two guard. All right, so here's our situation again. We've talked about the kickback pass and then a the shot or the dump down to the five. Now we're gonna get into the other side of the ball. And as you can see, I have a four man up here and a three man in the corner. Now this can be switched however you want it to be. But you might have say, well, Luke, you're crazy because my four man can't shoot a three so his defender is just going to be sitting in there and he's going to clog up everything and screw up everything. And my answer to that would be, great, that's fine. Because um, what we're going to do now is if you have a foreman or a big that can't shoot uh, from the outside, he becomes a screener now. So you have your three man, let's just say your three man is being guarded there, four man's being guarded there. So now what you're going to do Four man recognizes after that one comes off the ball screen, so after he gets right about here, the timing of this is important as well. So as he's coming off that screen, the four man is going to go down and set a pin screen for on the three man, on the shooter's man. Three man is just going to step behind the screen, rotate up, and now he's going to be available for a shot. So now the options for scoring are, you've got the roll there, you've got the two man coming up, you've got the three man rotating behind the pin screen right there, and then if everybody backs off, you've got a 15 foot jump shot for the one man. So this is, you're pinning in the shooter's defender. Very tough to guard. Now, as you can see, if this four man starts to come out on defense on the kick, now you have a mismatch, okay? One or the other is probably gonna be a mismatch for you. So now your situation looks like this. The one man, four man's helping in hard. He'll kick it to the three because this four man has just pinned down or, or pinned in um, on this pass right here. So if your three man can shoot, great, let it fly. If this four man comes out, there's a mismatch situation, there's a closeout situation where he can shot fake drive, but also keep in mind, after this pin screen happens, I'm assuming if your four can't shoot on the perimeter, he's decent in the post if he's playing. So after you pin in, you are posting hard right here and you've got a mismatch right there. So you've got a mismatch now on the three or you've got a mismatch with your four and that's how you would handle a situation where one of your players can't shoot uh, on the perimeter. So let's continue to talk about this situation where you have a player that can't shoot on the perimeter and their man is um, clogging up the lane and screwing up your high pick and roll. So let's say our four can't really shoot. There's another thing, not only can he pin and then three man comes up for the shot or the dump down, uh, pass in the post. You can also, the four man can stay there, you can kick it, okay, and then you can either pass here and set a ball screen or you can dribble at this player, hand off on the ball screen and then he's rolling to the basket. And uh, a great guy to really learn from, um, as far as coaching wise is, is Jeff Van Gundy. If you watch any of those, um, you know, the NBA Finals last year or anybody with Jeff Van, any game that Jeff Van Gundy is um, uh, analyzing, uh, really listen because he, he picks uh, a lot of great points and he's a great coach. Um, not only a good co commentator as well, but he says one thing, if you put one pick and roll in a situation 
it's, it's great. But two can be deadly because it cost, causes so much rotation and problem for the defense. So that is another situation where if you got a guy that can't shoot, kick out, pass screen, or dribble at him and let him hand off and do a, a pick and roll from that situation as well. And there's one more situation we can talk about um, with a, a, a guy that cannot shoot um, on the perimeter. Now the last part I wanted to talk about is putting your four man in the short corner. Now in my perspective, I, f I feel that if you want to have good spacing on your team, everybody should be able to hit a 15 foot jump shot. Now I understand it's a lost art in today's game, but if your guy cannot make a 15 foot jump shot and not make a three, it's going to be hard to get your spacing correct within your offense. So I suggest you have everybody be able to shoot a 15, shoot and make a 15 foot jump shot or shot. So this is the situation here. Again, we've high pick and rolled here, except now we're just moving that four right to the short corner. And it can't be on the block because his guy will be, it's too easy of a help if the, the four's on the block. He needs to be in, 50, in the short corner on the baseline where he can catch and shoot 15 feet away from the basket. Now his defender, what that does is if his defender goes to help on the roll, it makes a nice easy pass for the point guard right there for him to catch and shoot that shot. And if you notice, Let's say he does shoot it, um, he catch and shoots it right here. The five man rolling down is in perfect offensive rebounding position for a miss on the opposite side. If you want to see somebody wedge, meaning get up into um, it's the wedge is a move to create an offensive rebound. Watch Kevin Love for the Minnesota Timberwolves. He does this a lot. He'll wedge his def his defender underneath the basket, so when the shot is missed, he can just grab it and put it back in for an easy offensive rebound. So that creates good spacing and gives opportunities for your players in the high pick and roll. And let me just cover this last thing real quick. This kind of gets lost with the high pick and roll. And we've gone over a lot today, but the one of the beautiful things about the high pick and roll is this situation here. The one guard is coming off, the five man is rolling down. Now, the five man has to help at least right to there. Because as we talked about, you want to be able to have everybody in your team be able to actually make a 15-foot jump shot. So that creates a little guy helping there, or maybe a little guy helping there. So when that shot goes up, if the one comes off and he misses a shot, you have your biggest and probably your best rebounder right underneath the basket. And you'll see a lot of times if a one comes off and he gets in the lane and he shoots it, the five man will get the offensive rebound because he's battling with little guys right in there. And it's a great way to get offensive rebounds um, is the high pick and roll because of that situation. So that's it for the high pick and roll strategy session today. If you have a question, a comment, or a challenge, please feel free to leave a message in the comment box below. Or you can email me at luke at triple double and I will pick a couple challenges that coaches face and post those answers on YouTube. So again, thank you for listening and I hope to hear from you. Triple double